what was the meaning of each mask to you? Like, does each mask have a meaning to you in your life? Or is there a separate meaning to that? And so on. There's a meaning within the framework of tradition, which is the Balinese mask tradition. So, mm. like, it, even though I was using Western music and a Western suit, the, ma- the movements of the mask were within the frame of the character types that those masks represent. Okay. Um, but then on a personal level, like the old man mask, it's the first mask that I ever bought and, and I bought it with my dance teacher. And so there is this, and it's also, the old man is also the first mask dance that I learned after learning wow. um, the warrior's dance, uh, which is like a basic for training for, for going into Balinese mask. My, my teacher has passed away and it is a very strong connection to him that history, that time, he is the most important man in my life, well, apart from my son. <laughs> yeah, the other masks are characters, and so that's connected to my own, I guess, a fascination with actors transforming. That's why I have attended all these artists' rooms, because I'm quite fascinated between who someone is when they're not performing and when they are performing, totally. <laughs> and those transitions that happen. Could you tell us a little bit more about this um, the Balinese Topang art form and its significance to you and to performance in general? And so. um, it's a different approach to mask training because I think um, in the West, very often you, you immediately put the mask on and you go and work in a mirror, yeah, and you see what makes the mask come alive. Whereas in Bali, when you train for the mask, you don't ever wear the mask until, like, you don't even get to see the mask until 10 minutes before your first performance. <laughs> and so Atta Grotowski, they all talk about, in, you know, the use of every single muscle in your face and, and this as, as part of our actor training. In Bali, there are different reasons the masks are performed. So, okay, it's performed for tourists in hotels, of course, <laughs> but it's also performed as entertainment outside of the inner temple. And then at other times, it's also performed as, as an offering. And there is a, you know, there, there's different types of masks that are used. It does depend on context and the energy and, and whatever, what the function of this performance is doing in that community at that time. Nearly all performance masks have special rituals attached to them to bring them alive, but also masks come alive via the energy that's given to them. So after 20 years of using these masks in that way, it's, they don't change, their characters don't change. The context changes, but the characters don't. So even a cheap mask, a mask that's been made for tourists and made to be put on the wall, can actually end up having performance energy after the work is done on it. It was interesting to see this piece uh, a little over a month later, um, because now there's such a hysteria about wearing masks, you know, in in society these days. And so it was was kind of a a refreshing twist to see your artistry around uh, around these these masks. And uh, it it was a nice relief, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think we've all been working on mask performing in, in some <laughs> shape or form lately. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was nice to see real masks, you know. <laughs> yeah. 